north looking for yet another haunted house. Um, I might have screwed up on the direction, so we're not sure if we're going to find this one or not, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. <laughs> So there's something waiting for you. scarier experience. <laughs> You're not just coming by and seeing the props and the settings and the decor and the skeletons and tombstones. You're actually getting a scare out of it. And it's all free. What more can you ask for? This is great. This is the real spirit of uh, charity and neighborliness and what else you can think of. It's better than Christmas. So um, we left the Jackson Manor in Burbank uh, near Glen Oaks Boulevard. That's one we had been to about five years ago when it was just um, some tombstones and figures in the front yard and the uh, driveway was sort of an alien autopsy sort of thing with a dissecting table and an alien cadaver on it. As you can see, five years later we've gone, we've gone back and now they have a haunted maze there which shows it pays to go back and check these things out because they're always improving. And as I mentioned before, it seems that this um, haunted maze phenomenon is becoming more popular where um, private residences set up some kind of maze. They either put up black trash bags to create walls or use uh, black plywood or other things that you can throw together real simply. So it's kind of like a real low-budget amateur version of what you get for paying, you know, 40 bucks to go to Knott's Berry Farm. I think the first time we went to an amateur maze was uh, around the year, around 2001, about four years ago, a place called the Riverton Cemetery, which is just a few blocks from where we live in Valley Village. I remember that. That was great. That was a very good one. Um, we liked it a lot. We would have gone back, but they went pro the next year, and we just couldn't make it out to their new location. Um, once you start charging money, you really can't do it in your home anymore because you run into um, insurance problems, and also there's uh, problems with zoning. I mean, you're not zoned uh, for a business, so you really can't make money there. Um, you can't charge, you can accept donations, but if you're going professional, you have to find a real location, which can be difficult. 
So anyway, as I was saying, that was like four years ago, the first time we went to an amateur one, and now we're seeing them all over the place. Um, you know, you can hardly go to one of these yard haunts without uh, finding a maze where you go through and get scared. Um, so anyway, that was Jackson Manor. Now we're moving on to Boney Island next. We're at Boney Island. Uh, this one is on Morse Avenue, not too far from Coldwater. We've never been to this one before. It looks like a demented carnival. It sounds like they've just turned the music off. I hope that doesn't mean they're closing up on us. I guess we have to say this particular haunt is very whimsical, even silly. visited Boney Island uh, near Coldwater Canyon Boulevard, not too far from where we live. Um, as you can see, that's a pretty unique uh, Halloween yard haunt. When you go to as many of these things as we do, you start to see that a lot of them inevitably are similar. They all have tombstones and ghosts and skeletons and things, so it's always fun to find one that's quite a bit different as that one is. Also of note, um, it's been going on for about 10 years, but we've never seen it before. We somehow missed it in our travels. And it's put on by a man named Rick Polizzi, who is one of the producers on The Simpsons Show. I don't know if there's any connection there at all or not, but that's just an interesting little bit of trivia. 